Hi there. Now in this video, just going to be looking at part B of this question. If you want part A, do go back and check it out on my website. Okay, so uh, we've got to find the possible values of P then for the mod of Z1 divided by Z2 equaling 13. You'll notice I've put up the answer to part A, just in case you need that. So if you'd like to have a go at this one, haven't had a chance to do that, I'll just give you a moment to pause the video. Okay, welcome back then if you had a go. Now, there's two ways that we could do this question. I'll show you both methods. One will be to use the result from A. The other one, which I prefer, and I'll do first of all, is this, where we've got the mod of Z1 divided by Z2 equals 13. And then we pick up on this result that when you've got the mod of a fraction, it's exactly the same as doing the mod of the top, so that's the mod of Z1, divided by the mod of the denominator, so that's Z2, and that will equal 13. So if we just come down here then, now we've got the modulus of Z1, Z1 is P plus 2i, so to get that modulus it's just the square root then of the real part squared, that would be p squared, plus the imaginary part squared, which is just going to be 4. And that's divided by the modulus of z2. z2 was 1 minus 2i, so that's going to be the root then of 1 squared, which is 1. And then you just take the imaginary part, forget about the minus there, just the 2, so square the 2 and you've got 4, so that's 1 plus 4. If you're unsure about the modulus, do check it out on my website, okay, in the tutorials there. And this will equal 13. So if you square both sides and rearrange this, you'll end up with p squared equaling 841. And then all we do is just take the square root then to get P. Don't forget it can be plus or minus. And the square root of 841 will be plus or minus 29. Okay? So that's one way that we could do this. I did say, though, that there was another way. So if we just put or here as an alternative. So if we take this result from part A, we know the modulus must equal 13. And the modulus then would be the square root of this component here squared, the real part squared, plus the imaginary part squared. So if we were to square that both sides, that is squaring the 13, we would have p minus 4 all squared over 5 squared, 25 in other words then, plus the imaginary part squared, so that's going to be 4 lots of p plus 1, all squared over 5 squared, which is 25, is going to equal 13 squared, which is 169. So it's just a question of solving this equation now for p. And if I take you through that, what I would do is times both sides by 25, and we'll expand the bracket here. You're going to get p squared minus 8p plus 16, times this by 25, and expand the bracket with that 4. Actually, I'll just leave the 4 out, first of all. And we'll just have p squared plus 2p plus 1. And 169 times 25 is 4,225. So uh, I can see that we're going to have a quadratic here. p squared plus 4p squared, that's going to be... 5p squared. We've got minus 8p and 8p that cancels. 16 and 4 that's 20 and that's going to equal 4225. And then if we subtract 20 and divide by 5, p squared equals 841 again. And that leads on to p equaling plus or minus 29. So I feel that this method is quicker and easier for something like this rather than turning to this version of the complex number. Anyway, it's up to you which version you take. 